Hey everybody, my name is Rado, and today we are starting a series on the 2013 reboot of the Tomb Raider series, just called Tomb Raider. One thing I want to say before we jump into the game is this menu is awful. I remember how awful this menu was when I first played this game. Uh, it's just at a strange angle, it's zoomed out so uh, much. It is definitely here to show off this shipwreck scene, which uh, is cool and all, but hey, I gotta make some, uh, I gotta make some changes here and I can barely even see it. So, want to just go show that what my video settings are. One thing, if you have tress effects off, which is the hair quality, it significantly changes it. I would highly recommend everybody who's playing this game today uh, have it start start Tomb Raider on default settings and then come this way to the main menu. They have this nice little start benchmark here. It's not a very useful benchmark. All it tells you is what your minimum and your maximum frame frames per second is and what your average frames per second is. But it does a nice little spin around uh, Laura Croft and shows her hair. And on default, her hair looks amazingly different than what her hair looks like when the settings are turned way up. And with a newer video card, in, you probably will be able to turn it up pretty high, uh, if not to the maximum. Uh, there was one thing, there's no audio uh, settings on this menu. The dialogue and music volume and voice chat stuff all hidden inside of gameplay. And yes, I'll be playing on easy. I've learned that it's easier to have a smooth experience and have a better recording of a series than try to play on normal and die a lot and end up loading and wasting people's time. Um, also, this was one of those games that had multiplayer just kind of thrown into it for no real reason. There's no reason why Tomb Raider should have multiplayer. Uh, a lot of games during this time were getting multiplayer added. There's nobody playing multiplayer in 2015 when I'm recording this, so a whole section of the game is kind of useless to me, and that is the kind of a problem. comes with a little bit of bonus content, concept art, and character models and credits. I have all the DLC installed that you can get, so that will kind of give me a slightly different uh, experience. I'll, I'll have a couple of skills and abilities that I can use uh, probably very early on. And then at the very beginning of the game, when I first launched it, it wanted my email address to give the Square Enix no thank you. And half the achievements are to multiplayer, so those are out the window. And I think that's it. So, Tomb Raider. Uh, if you've never played any Tomb Raider game before, it's about a character named Laura Croft who uh, sometimes raids tombs, although in this reboot, hardly raids any tombs at all. Uh, she's in, like an Indiana Jones type ar artifact collector. Uh, it sometimes would go into the realm of magic. The series is unique because they originally started with you just fighting uh, animals like dinosaurs and lions and things like that, and now the game in the reboot is more with the 2013 and it's still 2015 mentality where it is way more moral to shoot bad guy humans than it is to shoot just animals. Uh, it would certainly upset a lot more people today to be playing a Tomb Raider game where the majority of the things you're shooting are animals. Of course you can get away with hunting animals every now and again, but you still have to focus on humans. Uh, a little bit of platforming was in the previous series, not that much of that is 
is really in this game. This is more of a first person shooter, uh, stealth survival game. It's, it's kind of pretty far away from what the original game would have been. And I will go, I will be doing a series in which I go through all the games since I got all of the Tomb Raiders in a bundle. But since they are coming out with a sequel pretty soon uh, to this reboot, I want to get this recorded and out and then we will historically cover the other things. Also, I want you to watch the storyline of this story. There's uh, definitely some stuff that I'll cover as I go through about how the story seems very much like it was chopped into pieces like video games are made and then reshuffled because certain events end up happening twice. Uh, the the entire concept of this game uh, happens twice. And then there's the big drama that came out with this game. I have no idea what was going in people's heads uh, when they were making the death scenes for Tomb Raider. But somebody obviously had some kind of, like, murder fetish going on. Because they lovingly animate unique death scenes for Laura Croft in a lot of situations. And if you're a good player and you never kill her, then you never see him. Or if you just get shot by a regular bad guy, you never see him. But if you fall off a cliff, the right cliff, if you do the wrong uh, quick time event, you end up seeing him seeing quite a lot of them if you die a lot and then if you end up having problems in one point which I probably will uh, you'll send, end up seeing the same death scene over and over again uh, I don't know why they did any of that it's fine just to zoom the screen out make it dark and say you are dead don't don't waste your animation skills on death scenes it, it's real silly but anywho that is enough talking let us begin the game I'm gonna try and focus on just uh, the story for the beginning new save slot so I'm choosing easy from now on uh, I just did a series of Witcher 3 on normal there was a lot of loading in it not a ton but too much because of places where I just died so I'm I'm wimping out I'm playing on easy uh, even if there was an achievement to beat it on normal or hard, I'm still going to kind of play it on easy just to make a smooth recording experience. A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I finally set out to make my mark, to find adventure, but instead adventure found me dragon's triangle south of japan endurance expedition day 22 so this is the reboot of her story so we're starting right at the beginning she's not like an expert at anything she was basically just an intern on this expedition In when life flashes before us, we find something. Something that keeps us going. Something that pushes us. So that was a great cutscene, but it is going to look a little bit different in the actual game. This looks more in engine. Yeah. 
this would happen. Come on, Doctor. Where the hell are out here? No sign of Dr. Lara. So, in that cutscene, she says she finds something that pushes her. Uh, I guess she hasn't found it yet. But. The subtitles on this are, are kind of strange in that they're heavily black background. I debate with myself whether I should turn subtitles on or not. I think most people would are fine with them. Watch that hair swing. They they really do are now putting a significant amount of resources in video games to just making hair look more realistic. Uh, particularly in Laura Croft's example, I guess uh, that is something to emphasize. So we're gonna move left and right to swing. She says something every time I... I Got to get down. I'm gonna start a fire. Stay away from that. I can't die like this. Ah, oh, so now I'm swinging different direction. This, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. Oh. That's kind of the best way to say this whole game. First of all, never pull anything out. In, in any, if you're pierced or something, don't ever do that. And now she's in such pain that the control is vibrating and everything is all wobbly. That's not a flaw in the graphics or anything. That's just her perception. So we started crashing on a boat. We immediately stab ourselves with a rebar. And now we're in some kind of crazy cannibalistic cavern. Uh, this would all be fine in a game if it had happened, like, with, over the course of an hour. But it really has only happened in the course of what five minutes. To you? Is she dead? Are you sure? How can you even be certain? I can't do anything to, like, try and cut her down or... Uh, help her. Don't. New gear acquired. Do I want to burn her? Guess I don't. So no, we've got some noise makers here. Don't want it. Hold X to use torch. Already burnt two things, maybe three things if you count myself in this game. I don't recall that being an actual major part of the uh, game that you burn that many things. Oh, no, we must have heard me. Oh, damn it. So. Gratuitous side look of 
Laura Croft there as she crawled through it and then we got the fire put out. I can press LB to examine the environment in my special survival instinct skill which is not explained. Uh, this was a very popular feature in games but in 2013 and it still kinda is and frankly it's getting a little tiresome. Uh, uh, particularly when there's no explanation. She's supposed to just be able to uh, know these things. It, it's a... It's really a conceit to the whole gameplay of the game where it's like we gotta show them the important stuff. We have to show that none of these bottles are important. Uh, because it is so scary to game developers that somebody would get lost in five minutes in the first five minutes and just put the game down and never play it now how do I get out of this vision doesn't seem like I can I'm a pyromaniac So, time the red barrel. Uh, famous video game reviewer had a scale in which he rated games based on how much gameplay you can get through until you run into a red barrel. I guess this one is rated pretty low since we saw one uh, probably in six minutes. I don't even know if that character really was trying to help me or not. I don't remember the story of this game very much. It goes in far strange directions. Another thing you should keep an eye out through this series is just the vast number of skulls on this island. This is supposed to be a remote, very lightly inhabited island, and yet the number of skulls that we run across is well into the thousands, if not millions. Like thousands and thousands of relatively uh, new skulls and bones. Force of will, find a way out. Gonna go through the waterfall again. Lose our torch. And now we've got our little tap. Tied. Press need to find a way out. Press left uh, button to see objective beacon. Well, see it once. It's pointing this way. So we've got to figure out a way to get past this mine <laughs> and this wall. Fire equals life, apparently. There's this little cave, the bales are floating down that way. What kind of contraption is this? And we have some strange contraptions. This is actually one of the few, like, tombs in this game. It's amazing how they made a Tomb Raider game with so few tombs. And it's still still a fine game. So now we are letting this float some here uh, collect against this gate. So hopefully we can 
create a big burst of them to hopefully jostle loose that section. I'm not sure they even really explained what that whole section was about. Just like maybe one crazy guy uh, that has nothing to do with anything else in the game. So, press Y to knock it. Okay, that knocked it, but there something in it. We have a convenient little place here where it seems like they want us to jump. No, she's grabbing her side, obviously, because she was stabbed. Uh, she's pretty much stay stabbed the whole game. And it's way, way too early for something like that to happen. If it was going to happen, it should have happened like in the middle of the game and been an impactful thing. There we go. So it was a scoop instead of a gate. So maybe we'll follow the rule of three and fill that up real nice. It's kind of hard to tell whether you're going to actually uh, Okay, that just bumped off, so uh, that probably means something's full. Uh, it's hard to tell whether you're going to make that jump. Why can't I just crawl out that hole right there? Right. So, X. So the fire and why the bubble. Now it's burning barrels going towards mine. Gotta get out of here. Model unlocked, XP gain. We're running for our lives. Everybody loves the chase team. now it just loads so right to this section now that I know what I'm gonna do I guess we don't ever get a story for all I know all the pain and suffering that I go through the rest of this game because I just didn't trust him. Right trigger, left trigger. Ah, oh, quick time event. How I lose quick time event. aren't matching how I'm pressing the keys at all. <sighs> I 
if you want to see a game with just downright awful quick time events, I suggest you watch my series, Jurassic Park the Game. If you want to just see how badly they can be implemented. Those weren't terrible. And here we are at the exact scene of the benchmarking program. Except for having two more you written in the sky. So she's bloody and dirty. This and hot for the rest of the entire game. And I think that's as good of a place as any that we will end this episode. So, I end my s episodes the exact same way. Let's see. We can get a in tight on our hair. Um, I ask you to like this video. I ask you to share it with your friends. I ask you to subscribe to my channel. I ask you to comment if you want to. And I ask you to watch every second of my videos because all of that stuff helps me out. If you want to support me, you can click on my name, Rido. That'll take you to my main YouTube page. And on the right is a blue button that says support this channel. Uh, if you click that and make a donation, that'd be greatly appreciated. This is the only thing I do. This is my career, is being a video game critic. Also on my main YouTube page is a great way to click the subscribe button. And there is a playlist tab that you can click and see all the other games that I've covered. I cover a lot of games. I have covered a lot of games. Over a thousand videos have been recorded by me in practically less than a year. Uh, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm not stopping. I release new videos every Monday through Friday. I try to keep the series the same time. So whenever you saw this episode will be whenever you see ne tomorrow's episode if tomorrow is a weekday uh, obviously I record things early so comments and uh, suggestions may not get responded to very fastly as far as my recordings but I will definitely respond to you in the comments field uh, the last thing that you can do to help me is click on my description down in the description there's a whole bunch of links for social media sites I'm on practically everything I could have th thought of and if you know of something I should be on let me know uh, things like Twitter Google Plus Facebook Steam Battle.net uh, Tumblr so click on those links follow me on those services that helps me get more uh, viewers and more views uh, and that's really what I'm trying to shoot for. That's my goal, is get as many views as possible on every video uh, to become a bigger uh, and better YouTube video game critic. Anywho, that's it for this episode. As uh, Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.